Welcome back to my channel, Divinely Guided Tarot. If you're new here, my name is Angel, and I'm here to bring you another general collective energy reading. This message, as always, guys, could be for all signs, so please remember to take only what resonates with your particular situation. Leave the rest behind, and as always, guys, thank you so very much for everything that you do to help this channel grow. It is greatly appreciated. I had Friday off, you guys, spent some time with God, didn't worry about anything but spending time with my children and meditating on things, and I'll tell you what, I didn't sleep at all. I maybe got three hours of sleep <laughs> oh, in the last 48 hours, but believe me, I've been struck with downloads, doing new scripture cards, um, really diving into to this next season for myself and for this channel. So I had to have some, you know, <clears throat> board meetings <laughs> with the angels and everything to figure out, you know, what are our goals for 2024? I mean, I have to practice what I preach, you guys. I have to, to get myself prepared. I have to nurture my, my gifts. I have to nurture my spirit. I have to obey God. And, you know, when God says, don't work, on the most profitable day of the week, I say, you got it. <laughs> because I traded in um, abundance in one form and I gained abundance in so many other ways. And it, it's just awesome, guys, whenever you are obedient to God like that. So let's go ahead and call in the Holy Spirit. Please come through. Please shield, guard, protect this portal while I channel divinely guided messages for my beautiful subscribers on this channel, please help me with messages they really need to hear at this divine right time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. So let's take a peek. We're going to use the Herbal Astrology deck. I figured oh, since we're in the last moon cycle, why not, right? And we have two cards out here. And guess what is coming into your future? Love and harmony. Guys... Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that forecast just amazing? Having harmony for the first time in your life, not going against the grains in any kind of direction, always, um, you know, going with the flow. You know, I'm getting a vibe of honeybees, 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 honeybees. They are so, they are probably the most in sync family or hive or tribe of individuals that you could ever be. I feel like you are one honeybee and all the other honeybees around the world are being activated at the exact same time and you are all flowing in the exact same direction, doing the exact same things, all being called south for winter. You know what I mean? It's really, I'm really getting a strong honeybee vibe. That everything just goes the way it's supposed to. And why? Because there's harmony within yourself. You've made peace with God. You've made peace with your past. You've made peace with your past love life. And I feel like you are now going to receive love because you healed um, love from your past. Oh, and look at that. We pulled out that crystal too. Got ourselves a little heart. Oh, I love it. I love it. Harmony and love. That's what I like to see, you guys. So let's go ahead and dive in a little bit deeper and figure out a little bit more about what else is coming to you in the future here in the next month, uh, for the next year. This harmony and this love. What does this harmonious, loving life look like for you in particular? What can you expect? What can you expect? Besides love and harmony. <laughs> oh, angels, you are funny. You are funny. Throwing out little dad comments like that. I love whoever does that for me. You guys keep me laughing through these readings. <laughs> keep me on my toes. All right. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, give me a little bit more. What else can we expect? What else can we expect? We can expect love. Love, 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 love. Yeah, love, 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 love. 
like 1980s kind of vibe, you know? I feel like I'm talking to an 80s baby in the crowd because I'm hearing 80s love music, 80s soft rock, 80s, like 80s, 80s. It's that's what's screaming out for me right now. I'm I'm even seeing parachute pants, which is kind of funny. I wonder if somebody dressed up as MC Hammer for Halloween or something in this group. I don't know. Maybe that's significant for somebody. But guys, I see love coming in and I do feel like this is not just um, a partnership. This is actually romantic love. Why are you receiving this now? Because this is what you left behind. This is what you overcame. Love is greater than this. And I love that you are stepping on it. It's like I'm seeing you MC hammer dance shuffle across my board here. And you keep stamping on the devil's feet. Like, can't touch this. And it, you, just keep, you just keep smacking them. Just like that. Over and over and over again. It's like he, he's like, stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. I can't help it. That's what it, it looks like to me. I want to bend my card. I mean, if it's the devil card, we can crack him in half over my knee. I don't have a problem with that. But, guys, the point is there are angels stepping on the throats of demons that were from your past. What you healed from was the key. You had to find harmony in your life. You had to be able to free flow that energy that God gives you in you, out of you, in you, out of you, taking the bad stuff into you and giving it to God it's like you are this sieve. You are the cheesecloth that drains, uh, that allows all of this purified living water to come through. You learned how to heal. You did this. You and God did this. The devil has no control over you anymore. Yeah, why? Because you're stronger than the devil. You are stronger than your enemies. You are stronger than the energy that the enemy sent you. The enemy is only using your own energy against you. Remember that, guys. We are smarter than our enemy. We are mightier than our enemy. We are strong because God lives in us. And the enemy cannot live where God lives. That's our divine protection. God in us. Our angels surrounding us preventing us from receiving broken hearts, preventing us from falling into these traps. Walk the line. Lead with love and compassion. Yes, you have figured out the secret to being unbeatable. Yeah, justice and temperance. Look at that. Balance is coming back into your life, guys. With the Ten of Pentacles, with the Justice card, or excuse me, the Judgment card, and the Emperor. This is what's coming to you. And it's not only you that had to come into peace and harmony within yourself. You had to overcome great conflict in your life. Yeah, great conflict. You had to overcome these obstacles, but it wasn't just you. He had to overcome his obstacles as well. We cannot be in divine relationships or in romantic relationships with people who are unhealed, untried, and unwilling to see themselves and their actions and holding themselves accountable for. This person had to get right with God before he would be able to come to you. And it just so happens that both of you are healing on this path together, but you don't know each other. You, you are not aware of each other. You're not looking for love. That's, that's, that's another key. That's another secret ingredient to the stew. You're not looking for it. Because you've healed from it and you're focusing on something better. You're focusing on pouring love back out into the world. 
because love was denied to you. So you're like, well, I'm not going to let that stop me. When hard times come, I'm going to go ahead and turn it into something good, something positive. I'm going to transmute that energy for God's good. I'm going to use my pain in my lack of having a relationship, the one thing I've always wanted. And then I'm going to pour that energy out and bless other people with my prayers and my strength that they'll be able to find love in their chaotic lives. That you will be able to enjoy everything that you earn. This is enjoying all of the energy that you put out into the world. You are going to receive it back. What you sent out to people is now starting to filter back to you. You've chosen your side. The enemy did not count on you learning your lessons this season. This season was very important for you. 2023 was very, very important to you. And this is a timeless message. So if you're checking this out in the future, let me tell you, the year 2023 was very important to you and you probably are just now realizing that. So for those of you who understand this, that this is your season of blessings, that this is your season of, it, of, of bliss. You are going to be enjoying this nine pentacle, ten pentacle life. This wealth is going to be pouring into you. And whatever that wealth looks like for you, it could be more finances coming in, like more income coming into you so you can pay bills. Maybe you're one of those people that are like, I would just love to be able to take care of my essential needs and have enough to be able to do a vacation every year and maybe save a little bit for the future. Like you want to be comfortable, comfortable living. That's what a lot of you are telling me. I would just be satisfied with having my finances give me a comfortable life. I don't want to be rich and famous and ridiculously, obnoxiously wealthy buying things I don't need. Some of you are just like, I just want to not have to break my neck to survive. You know, <clears throat> I like that. So what I would like to know is where is love and harmony going to be finding you? Like what places are you going to be going in life where your love and harmony is going to be essential? Where are you being called into in this life? Where these gifts, this divine grace that has been given to you, where are you going to be able to share that in the world? Where are you being called to to share those beautiful gifts? And what places are you going to run into your divine counterpart? Because you know this love of your life is, is on a pathway to you you're on a pathway to each other and I know you're not focusing on it right now I know I know but that's what's allowing it to come to you so where are you being called to bring love and harmony in is going to be the place where you run into this counterpart so that's why I'm looking into it oh Nagi right yeah yeah there's a reason behind everything <laughs> We're not focusing on him and the promises of this year. We're not focusing on it at all. But we're focusing on the other side of love. How can I pour that love and harmony out into the world? And now the places that you're going to be called to. To deliver your particular gift. Your viewpoints on the world that show people that. There's love all around them. We have airport energy. I feel like maybe for somebody that I'm talking to, there are conversations that you have with people that are overseas, you know, and you are proving that love can exist even in great distances. Long distance relationships work people, but it requires you to have healthy boundaries, safety zones, 
you know, rules, you know, for each other, especially if you're in different time zones. You can't always be, you know, on the phone 24-7, but just checking in, that kind of stuff. Um, what I am seeing here is you going to an airport to travel to see friends, to see soul family, to go to events or get-togethers, like girls trips, weekends, whatever the case may be. Weekends with the guy friends, you know? I feel like at the airport, it means more than just an airport. You're going to be called to a place where many people from all different countries are going to come to a, like a rallying point, like a cross section, like standing in the middle of Times Square and you could cross paths with people from 15 different countries right there in Times Square and you don't even realize it. You know, I feel like you're going to be touching many cultures, whatever that means. You're going to be touching many cultures. So maybe you're traveling on mission work even. I do see somebody that's been saving up their money to do like a once in a lifetime trip to do mission work. Mission work in Africa, mission work in Jamaica, mission work in the islands. I'm seeing islands. Mission work in the Middle East, which is dangerous, very dangerous. But um, I feel like somebody is, is going on a spiritual retreat and doing mission work, building houses, things like that. That's really beautiful. Um for this individual who is called on mission work to build, to make things like um, um, to dig wells, to to bring about, you know, certain humanitarian projects to fruition, house building, that kind of thing. This is where you're going to meet your partner. Your partner is also an activist. Hmm. I'm getting strong Prince Harry and Meghan Markle vibes. Two beautiful, healed individuals who focus on other people, a life of service, civil service, where you just pour that love and roll up those sleeves and have no fear of, of, of getting dirty and doing the hard work and everybody loves them. Everybody can relate to them. That's what it feels like. Um, you could also consider yourself a celebrity or be running into somebody of a celebrity status. That could also be what that is. But that particular romantic relationship, and I always looked at Harry and Meghan's relationship as true love. It really is. They are truly the kind of couple that I think that I would want to model you know, the kind of love that I want to see in, in a relationship. Um, and, you know, if the world hates that, the world hates that. But the world doesn't hate that. I feel like you are going to be, for this particular person or group of people that resonate with that timeline, that's where you're going to meet that individual's on mission work. Ooh, so where else? Where else is my collective being called to spread their love and harmony? Where are they being called right now? That's also going to lead them to their, their counterpart. <laughs> we have the tavern. So maybe you're, you're one of those people that go out for drinks every Friday. Maybe you hit a happy hour with the girls and you hit your favorite, you hit your favorite tavern, your favorite bar, your favorite pub, you know, wherever country you're in, wherever you like to say it. Um, it could be a hole-in-the-wall kind of place with the cheapest booze and the, the worst-smelling bathrooms. Or it could be a high-dollar, high-class uh, venue where you go and you have to dress up in a cocktail dress for, for drinks. Wherever it is that you're going to, you're going to a social place. And with this tavern energy here, I am picking up that, especially around the holiday seasons, um, there's a lot of depressed people in bars and pubs. We're not talking like the obnoxiously drunk and drinking. We're talking about the quiet people that are sitting in booths by themselves, reading a book in a bar, you know, like not, not paying attention to anybody looking a little long in the face. This is where one of those divine miraculous moments 
happen where you see an earth angel walk into the bar and you pinpoint where the sadness is coming from and you love opportunities like this because you can help bring people or at least distract people excuse me you can help distract people from the trials and the problems that they're facing in their life and give them a little bit of a glimpse breathe life into them as they're drinking their spirits and then hopefully those words will resonate with them and sink into them you know bars are dangerous places for people who have unstable energy because when you drink alcohol you allow yourself to to let spirit take over you know and that's oftentimes where a lot of demons i see a lot of demons hiding out in bars and it's natural to see them there because they're just waiting for their next victims. You know, who's going to be dumb enough to be so inebriated that they're not going to remember tomorrow? Those are the ones the demons always kind of cling around. And it's usually a lot of women, you know. <laughs> but I feel like you being the divine light that you are going into a place like this for innocent you know, just a cocktail hour, hang out with some friends and have a drink or two and then go home. You know, you're able to save a lot of people just by the positivity that you pour out into this hot spot of yours, of you and your friends. This is also where you are going to meet your divine counterpart. So if you are the type of person that goes to a bar or a pub and, you know, you're just once a week, like every Friday or every Saturday, you and the girls get together, you and the guys get together, and you just relax for an hour or two, and then you kind of go about your rest of your day, you know? This is going to be a divine place and opportunity for you to experience. I want to do one more place, and I know we're going a little bit longer, but I took Friday off, um, so I'm, I'm okay with doing a little bit of a longer read for you guys, and I appreciate your patience with me. Woo! Last place, we have the parking lot. Okay, so this is not just a parking lot. This is a kind of limbo phase. There's going to be, for this particular group of individuals that I'm tapping into, you're going to be brought to a place in your life where it's going to feel like limbo, where you're not going to be able to move forward, but you're not going to be able to move backwards. And for you, it's going to be confusing because you're like, wait a minute, whoa, I'm healed. Why am I being led into a place of, of limbo where I, I can't move forward and I can't move backwards? What on earth is going on, God? And that's the right answer. God's saying, hey, I know you're good. You're cool. Like your energy is right where I need you to be, but... I'm having you transfer out of one phase and I'm having you go a little bit slower in between your blessings and your trials and tribulations because there's quite a few people that are residing in this kind of energy that are going to be brought into your life. Friends, family, strangers, you name it, work people. This is going to be a divine opportunity to say, yeah, you know what, guys, I can I can relate with you. I feel like I'm a little bit stuck right now, like God's telling me I need to do this and then I make movements towards that goal and he's, he's not letting me move forward. And while you talk to people and share your story with people, they're going to be like, wow, you're going through the same thing. And you're like, yeah, and you can say, but look, this is how I'm handling it. And if you handle it the same way that I'm handling it right now, we can rely on each other to lift each other up and get each other through these difficult seasons. And then I can show you how to succeed in this because I'm going to the top. And you're confident that you're going to be able to break out of this. But you're going through it is helping somebody else go through it. You're going through it positively. Somebody else is going through it negatively, toxically. And you're going to be helping those individuals break out of those trials and tribulations right along with your own trials and tribulations. And God says you are smart enough and can think on the fly. And you know everything you need to know to break through this glass ceiling. And you're going to take many people with you, including your divine counterpart. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. 
It's like you don't look for love. You're just going about doing your own thing, your own business. And God is blessing you with that love you had focused your entire life on before. Right in the middle of the, the, the eye of the storm, you know. Isn't that beautiful how God works? When you give it to God, God gives you it in spades back. Blessings on blessings. When you have the right focus, amazing what can happen, what miracles can happen in your life. So Holy Spirit, give us a divine word to close out this message. One. Need two more. One, two, and three. All right. So first one, let's see what we got. It's as though I walk in the flesh. I am not carrying on my warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of my warfare are not physical, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 4. You are going to be testifying to people how to break out of toxic cycles or in periods of stagnation where you feel stuck. And you're going to be walking through and showing people how to beat it. You're saying, don't get toxic. Don't get jaded. Do not walk in accordance to the flesh. Do not carry on warfare using kind of like your ego, leading with your ego. And using human weapons, meaning not just physical weapons, but using reverse psychology and mind games. Like we don't, we don't play in that arena anymore. Your weapons and warfare are not physical. They are in spirit. It's with your attitude. It's with the choices that you choose to make. It's how you believe. It's your faith. It's that harmony. It's that divine grace that is brought into your life. What real love is. You feel love from God. That's your secret weapon. You carry on in a warfare of love. And you lead with love. And you deliver everything in love. But love is also going to overthrow and conquer strongholds. Look at that. He was on the bottom this entire time. I completely forgot he was out on the board because there's so much love piling, good things piling up on top of them. You were made for this century. You were born to do this. You know it. You know it. It says, I live in obedience to God. I do not conform myself to the evil desires of my former ignorance. The one who called me is holy, and I am also holy in all of my conduct and manner of living. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. Again, this is saying, I choose to obey God. I choose to follow God. I choose to give God, everything in me, every desire that I have, every dream that I have, but I also give him all the bad stuff in me. And I ask him to, you know, prevent that energy from, from reaching out into the world to help you transmute that energy and to turn it into something good. You know, we mentioned Harry and Meghan, you know, the royal couple, the former royal couple. They're showing me right now and reminding me that she had gone through a miscarriage, you guys. And instead of wallowing in that pain, she burned through that pain with her husband. And they turned it into something good. And God blessed them again with another beautiful baby girl. You know, their story is, is really strong in this particular message. And I feel like it's because... Both of those individuals, that couple had to overcome some of the most horrific stalking and abuse. I mean, people would take their allegiance, who should have given them their allegiance, protected them, loved them as family, were jealous of them because they were more popular. And they did what any karmic individual would do. They push them out. They say lies. You know, you can really tell who your true family and friends are. 
And most of the time, our families are made up by our friends. You know, it, it, family doesn't have to be blood. But I feel like they are a good example of role models of how couples should behave, you know, in times of trial and tribulation, you know. That's beautiful. It says, I have made a decisive dedication of my body as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is my reasonable service and spiritual worship. I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewal of my mind so that I may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect. And that's from Romans chapter 12, verse 12, uh, 1 through 2. Excuse me. 12, 12. 12, 12 portal could have been a date that you made a decision to God. So recently here in this week, somebody made a decision to go and follow God on the 12, 12 portal. I give my life to you, God. I choose to dedicate my life as a living sacrifice to the Holy Spirit to do your will. Somebody dedicated their life to God and angels celebrated and sang in joy and rejoiced for you. Now I want to I want to show you something here that we pulled scripture out of Corinthians, out of Peter, and out of Romans. And they all talked about one thing. There was one thing in common in each one of these. And I'm so sorry. There. They were all talking about not conforming to the patterns of this world. I don't walk in according to the flesh. I don't carry on the warfare of the flesh. I do not conform my mind. I live in obedience to God. I do not conform myself to evil desires. I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewal of my mind. Guys, this is all about constantly choosing not to follow the world or mankind or what everybody considers to be normal. And you following only God's voice. The same way God called a Christian girl like me to read tarot. Against everything that I was taught or conditioned or thought about. And, like, and I understand why I'm being called here. But this is very similar to you too. No matter what anybody tells you. God is telling you something very specific to do. And you have to follow it. And I am applauding you that you can follow God's words and not follow the judgment of mankind. I do not conform to this world to make other people feel good. It is not my responsibility to follow along with the rest of the sheep in this world. Bah, bah. No, you were called to be a shepherd. Okay? And... When you're chosen, you're chosen, and you know you're chosen. If you're not chosen, this message might not be for you, so I apologize. So, guys, just keep doing what you're doing. Stay right. Stay in the right at all times. Remember that everything you go through from this point going forward is going to be used as testimony and you are going to be using it as examples for people that are going to be coming to you in the future. You're going to be able to recall these moments, these successful moments of growth. And you're going to show people that trials and tribulation is just a beautiful way to grow in this life. Our best growth comes from overcoming the greatest obstacles. Yeah, climbing Mount Everest is difficult. You have to train for it. Lots of labor going into it. There's a lot of risk that goes into it. But all of that work at the very end when you sit up on the top with your oxygen mask on. And you get that certificate that says that you've done, you've climbed the highest peak on the planet. You know, we're working hard in this life to please God. Because the rewards are going to be great for us up in heaven, right? 
So that's what we have to keep remembering. Why do we do this? Why do we put up with, with trials and tribulations? Because God is trying to show us that we can grow from that and use all of those experiences to become better human beings, to become better adults. So we can become the right kind of adults that teach the children of this world to be good people. This is why we're doing this. We're teaching the heirs of the planet how to live harmonious lives and how to lead in love. And we're showing how God blesses all of this on our lives and blesses this on the lives of other people around us. You were chosen. It's beautiful. So guys, no matter where you are in the world, take care of yourselves. Thanks for stopping in and have a good day. God bless you all.